Hello, so today I'm going to show you how you would use the counterbalance routine inside PsychoPy Builder in order to counterbalance your groups. Now, if you're running a study online, there is an additional step that you do need to be aware of. We'll cover that in a separate video. Um, but this is the first step for counterbalancing if you're running a study in the lab or online. And it's a relatively new feature, so hopefully it's useful to walk through. So we're going to start inside PsychoPy Builder. Um, I have not done anything in this experiment just yet, but I want to draw your attention to the custom section. And in here, you can find the counterbalance component. Now, do note that it's got a beta sticker on it the mo at the moment in this release. Um, that's just because it is a relatively new feature. Um, but that's going to be the, the, um, the component that we do use today. Now, when you do select that, you'll notice that it opens up a slightly different component to what we're used to. In particular, rather than adding a component to an existing routine, like say text or an image, it actually opens up its very own routine. So this is what we call a standalone routine in PsychoPy. What that does mean is that it isn't automatically integrated into your experiment. So you do want to make sure that you insert routine, select that counterbalance component and pop it at the start of your experiment or wherever it's going to make sense for you to assign your participants to groups. OK, so by default, our routine has the name counterbalance. You can rename that. We're just going to leave it at its default for now. There's also two different options as to how we counterbalance number of groups or from a conditions file. For now, let's just stick with the number of groups. So I'm going to say, imagine we want two groups and we want 10 slots per group. So we want 20 participants in total. We can then specify how many times we want to repeat sampling. So at the moment, this is just one, meaning hopefully we'll end up with 20 participants in total. However, I could also, let's say if I wanted 20 participants, um, I could say I want five slots per group, but I want to repeat sampling twice. What this would mean is that we should have five participants assigned to each of our two groups. And then once those slots are full, we're going to repeat that sampling procedure. I'm going to leave it at its default for now of 10 slots per group and one repeat. And then I'm going to save my file. Now, what this is going to return is it's going to return a value for each participant that starts your experiment. So it's going to be either uh, group one or group two. For now, to test this works, let's just click on this trial routine here. And I'm just going to add myself a text box component. And quite simply, I'm just going to say dollar sign and then inside quotations, you are in a group. And then I'm going to add, uh, let's say, counterbalance, which is the name of my counterbalance routine, dot group, which is how I access the group that was assigned from this counterbalance uh, routine. I might also just want to make sure that so that this does format correctly as a string. I'm just going to make sure that that value there is converted to a string. So in Python, I've just added str and then enclose this inside rounded brackets here. And then I'm just going to make this field set every repeat just because this is something that we don't know at the very beginning of our flow. We need to wait until counterbalancing has been performed in order to pipe in this variable here. So that I have a chance to see this, let's actually present this for, uh, let's say, just 10 seconds for now. So I'm now going to run my experiment and see what happens. Okay, so I've just clicked run on my experiment. And now you can see some text that says you are in group one. Um, so I'm going to run this just a few more times and see if I'm assigned to different groups. OK, so I've run that just a few times and now I've opened up the location where my experiment is saved. And if you've used a counterbalance routine, you should now see a new file in your experiment location called shelf.json. The reason it's called shelf will hopefully become clear once we run through the online step that's needed for online experiments here. But for now, I'm just going to open this up in a text editor. You should be able to open it in any text editor. And it looks a little something like this. So we've got the name of our routine. 
we've got what repetition we are currently on in terms of our sampling or how many repeats we have left, I should say. Um, and then we've got our two groups. So I said we'd have group one and two, but of course, Python starts at zero. So we've got group zero and one. And we can see here how many slots are left per group. So I've got eight slots left for my group zero, and I've got seven slots left for my group one. Now, if I wanted to make more slots available as I run through, let's say I've launched the study, my participant withdrew partway through, I know they were in group one and I wanna advertise a new slot on uh, or make available a new slot there. I could quite simply change this in this file, make sure to save that. And then my experiment knows that it's still got another slot available. So that's it in terms of using the counterbalance routine. Um, from here, there's a number of other things you can do. We're gonna cover those in other videos, but hopefully this is useful in getting you started.